And in this panel, we are going to be talking um, something interesting. Finland is a quite small place, as you know, but um, somehow it actually has that chemistry for, for the games, what we have discussed before. And in this panel, we actually want to talk about Finland and tell you about <coughs> what kind of opportunities and what kind of things are actually happening in Finland as we speak today in the game industry. And uh, before we start, I want to actually ask the panelists to do uh, an introduction for themselves, what you guys do, and how you're related to the game industry. And thank you very, very much for uh, joining this panel. So I really appreciate it. Well, then I'll probably start. My name is Olga Makeva, and I'm a senior advisor of uh, Business Finland which is uh, a Finnish governmental organization uh, providing uh, all kind of uh, services, uh, internationalization services for Finnish companies and also uh, attracting uh, foreign companies to Finland. So um, we are related to gaming industry. Uh, first of all, um, as we uh, provide support and finance to uh, gaming companies, gaming studios in Finland, and we also help Russian gaming studios to establish uh, their business, uh, to move their business to Finland. Okay, hello, Kope Hiltunen. I'm the director of Neo Games. Neo Games is the hub of the Finnish games industry, kind of umbrella organization. Our mission is to accelerate the growth of the Finnish games industry with very different means. Hello, my name is Yuri Partanen. Uh, and chairman of Games Factory. We are a house of 20 studios in the fall. Uh, we are in the, located in the Maria Hospital area in Helsinki and we are opening uh, similar franchises in, in Portugal and Japan this year. Hi guys, I'm uh, Vladimir Chapanui. I'm the director of uh, investing services at Helsinki Center in St. Petersburg. So we're actually based here in St. Pete's in the House of Finland. And uh, we help Russian companies and CIS countries, uh, companies to go abroad via Finland. Uh, hello, my name is Artem Kirilovsky and I'm CEO of the gaming company. We recently moved to Helsinki with the help of Business Finland. So. And now uh, I'm Finnish game developer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, the first thing uh, that I want to talk about uh, is the ecosystem. It is the Finnish game ecosystem. And actually, um, we know that last year the turnover of the Finnish game industry was about 2.4 uh, billion euros. Uh, and I want to ask a question to maybe all of you who might have a word to say, what do you think how, that for such a small country, such a big result? What is the, what is the driver for it? If I may start, I think it's all about the community. And uh, uh, my colleague Yuri here, he can tell you a bit more about the game sector, but uh, you know, since Finland is such a small and close place, it's really easy to get in touch with everyone. And uh, my colleagues here, they just make it easier for the once you're in the uh, system you're in, right? Yes, that's correct. And, and maybe Kope can continue after that, this, but, but I'll, I'll focus on the community part because I think that's very, very important. That's, uh, that's something that's concrete in Finland as well. That's not necessarily the same thing in other countries in, in the Western world. For example, um, there are a couple of anecdotes and stories about uh, how studios have struggled in Finland and then rose back again with the help of other studios. And, and I'll, I'll say one of, one of these stories, one of these companies is a is, is, um, Finnish uh, company that just went public. Uh, in the stock exchange, uh, there, there are only four of these companies in Finland, so you might guess which one it is. So this company, years back, they had a problem with, the, with one of the games, and it was actually succeeding too well at the time when it was launched, and, and the backend didn't actually hold, hold to the load, and, and they were struggling with it, and, and they actually gave a call to some, some colleagues at, at um, the biggest success in uh, game company in Finland, and, and that company helped them without any cost. 
uh, send a couple of guys over and the problem was fixed on the server side. And that's, that's one of the practical examples of how the community works. It's not only us organizing events or, or like doing these kind of things, but it's, it's, um, it's practical stuff. People help each other and, and if the mentality is there, people will keep on helping each other and, and everybody wins. What else? Well, yeah, I, I guess that if we go a little back in time, in history, Finland has always been very strong in mobile. The first mobile, commercial mobile, mobile games were made in Finland back in the 90s, and, and we have a long pedigree in mobile games. And when the mobile games started to emerge alongside with the App Store, uh, I guess that Finnish game developers had a mindset for mobile games. And, and in that sense, we were, as an industry, we were, we were in the right place in, in, the, in the right time. And of course, when we think about economical success of the Finnish games industry, one of the things is that, that free-to-play model, which is at the moment the dominant model in the Finnish games industry or in the global game industry also, not only in Finland, uh, it was adapted, adapted quite yeah, early in, uh, to the Finnish games. So free, uh, adapting free-to-play model, being ready to mobile, of course community is the cornerstone of everything, uh, everything in the Finnish games industry. Uh, but there is, there is a lot of factors which, which have made, made us successful during the last couple of years. I'd like to add that, um, actually, I can help saying that uh, ecosystem is not only about uh, the community inside, but also things that are outside. And I mean that uh, in Finland, um, uh, Finnish companies, also gaming companies, they have very good opportunities to get public financing, but also to attract um, private financing, foreign investments, and that is because of very good business um, ecosystem, business atmosphere in general. Finland has very good international uh, ratings, and that makes uh, investments in uh, Finnish businesses very safe, uh, and that attracts uh, <coughs> investors from all parts of the world. So I think that uh, this is also a very important factor that uh, helps the industry to, uh, to develop. Yeah, and if I may add that the business Finland, which was part of it, was previously known as Tech, as they changed the name, mm -hmm. God knows what, 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 what reason, but they changed the name in the beginning of the year. Tech has been in investing to Finnish games industry between 2004 to 2017, around 110 million euros to do the growth of the game developer companies. So it has been quite important for, 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 the, for the growth of the games industry in Finland. Actually, we have been uh, investing into the industry since 1995. Yeah, it was the first so, investment, so but yes, we don't have the figures. Over, over 20 years yeah. already. Yeah. And actually, my next question is uh, to you, Kope, because you represent the association, and um, it seems that that is not very common for each country to have an association. So I would actually like to ask, how does the association help uh, the game industry to, to grow further? Well, to be honest, we have diff many different associations. There is not only one, there is uh, at least five different associations which are helping the game industry to grow. Uh, of course, Neo Games, we are the hub of the Finnish games industry, or kind of official spokesperson of the Finnish games industry, doing trade missions, organizing different kind of events, events making studies, doing quite a lot of actually lobbying uh, towards the government. Then there is IGDA, which is quite big in Finland. The IGDA is, a, is an organization, association for individual game developers. And IGDA has been doing very valuable work for, 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 to, to, to uh, accelerate the growth in the, of the Finnish games industry and accelerate the growth of skills of, of individual game developers and, and this kind of stuff. Then there is Finnish Game Developers Association, which is basically association of the game developer studios and a Finnish game developers association is representing the game studios when that kind of representation is required then there is Finnish game jam which is organizing different kind of, kind of game jam events for for the uh, people who are interested in developing games but who necessarily are not in the games industry yet so they are this kind of game game jam uh, events there there is around 
five to ten game jam events every year. And then there is, of course, uh, uh, organizations like Finnish uh, Game Researchers uh, Association, which is, well, <coughs> Game Researchers Association. And, and the, I think that main thing is, is that we are all working together. So although there is many associations, but we have the same target, we have the same goal, and we are all working to the same direction to, to make the Finland the best place to develop games or maintain its status as the best place to develop games. Uh, actually, my next question was for Yuri, uh, because you are representing something new, right? You just opened the door to the Games Factory, and uh, you're already opening this to the other countries. So I would actually like to ask, what is the Games Factory? What's the mission, and how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, the concept has been living for one and a half years, and it's basically um, the second coming of the same, same idea. It was tried out few years back and, and, and um, at that time failed due to lack of funding, but at this time we did it a little bit differently. We focused on the community first and, and kind of the success of the studios first rather than the actual incubation uh, angle of the whole thing. And um, our, our thinking is that this is actually the living and breathing culmination of, of, of these things that we have been discussing and, and the spirit and, and kind of the business mentality and, and, and kind of um, the aspect that, that the Finnish government also and, and the city and the municipality have towards deve developing games and game companies and, and we want to be the place where the business happens, we want to be the enabler but also the, the um, tough point where, where it's a little bit tough to get in but, but um, if the community and, and the spirit is right um, uh, we all win in this, this scenario. So it, it's, it's much about um, the unmet needs that the Helsinki area had in these, these aspects and, and also Finland-wide. So um, in other cities like uh, Kajaani and, and Oulu and, and Kotka and, and Tampere and all around Finland, there are different kind of hubs and, and incubators that, that for game studios, but Helsinki never did ha have that. So that was a little bit weird, weird um, at this stage of, of the time. So. We saw that this was the opportunity that was missing and, and, um, and there was a lack and a, and a hold. So we decided, okay, let's do this with the skills that we have, with this network and the people and, and the support from, from the people around us and all the associations. So it was possible to do. And um, it's an open platform. I, I want to emphasize that, that we don't want to dictate what happens, but we rather open the doors and, and open the doors for potentially to Helsinki Center or whoever wants to organize events or business there. So uh, we want to just see that um, it's controlled in a way that, um, that it's not exploited rather than it's kept as a living and breathing business entity that can create more business both in Helsinki but also around Finland and, and, and Europe. Actually, uh, since we are today, yeah, we're at the consulate kind of on the Finnish soil, but we are still in Russia, in St. Pete. So, interesting, what, um, is there any services that you offer to the foreign companies? Because I think that most of the people here represent in the foreign game studios. Yeah, so, so we definitely have a couple of, couple of joint ventures that we are building and, and, and attracting talent from, from the Russian area to Finland to work in high-tech uh, uh, game companies is, is something that we are passionate about, but also f the perspective of, of us being both the outsourcing entity and the insourcing entity. So we can do the business either way, it makes sense. We can either do the games or we can outsource the game doing to someone else, potentially in this area as well. So, so these are kind of the things and, and we also work in the area of analytics and user acquisition with a partner called Selens and, and work in education um, and, and those sort of things. So many of these areas are something that we didn't foresee in, in the past, but as we think about the whole thing as, a, as an open platform, people come to us and tell us this is a good idea, so then we say, okay, looks like a good idea, let's try it out. So, so that's kind of our thinking, and that's why we find these odd um, business opportunities that we see that are unmet at the moment. All right, cool. Um, Yuri, sorry, I'm going to throw the ball once again to you. But you, uh, Kope mentioned this IGDA, and I think that that's really something uh, very famous. I think actually quite, I 
invited quite many people from St. Peter area to visit, but you used to be a chairman of that one, so like many years back. So yeah, yeah. What's your experience of that? Well, it's, it's a really nice organization. If, if, if you look at it from the perspective of individual people, it's, it's a meeting point, it's a networking place. Um, but it's also something that has cultivated uh, the spirit and, and kind of the potential new projects in Finland. Um, it is not a place uh, directed towards um, recruiting people or actually doing business in those events, but it's, an, it's a place where people meet and network and that comes before actually making business and, and finding the recruits. And personally, uh, I wouldn't here, be here with you if, if I hadn't be, had the chance to be working with IGDA and uh, having been the chairman and building the whole thing early on. Because it's, it's a very nice place to grow your, your talent as well, personally. So, so I, I have a lot to thank for IGDA. Um, are you planning any acceleration uh, programs for the game studios or the game teams at the Games Factory? That's yes, yes the we are planning, but I'm not going to tell you anything about that. It's, 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 it's in planning and we want to b develop something with, with Metropoli and, and, and uh, Digitalens in Helsinki. And so want to create something that's uh, sort of on the boundary of, of the school incubator and the business life. Something in the middle because there's something something missing there. It's, it's a bridge that we need to build. Um, in practice it could mean a, a space for 10 studios, but we don't, we don't actually know the details yet. But after the summer I know more. All right, cool. We'll be waiting for those. And um, Olga, you are representing Business Finland here. You are based here in St. Petersburg. So uh, actually a lot of questions come from the foreign companies who they, uh, from the Russian companies who they could meet. But um, would be interesting to hear what kind of support Business Finland offers to the, uh, to the game industry. To the, like how Business Finland is supporting the growth of the Finnish game industry. Well, um, I should probably start with the fact that we think that uh, the gaming industry is uh, very important for Finnish economy, um, Finnish economy, and um, it's developing fast. And we try to support this uh, development uh, with uh, our financing programs. And uh, companies registered in Finland they can apply for business Finland financing. Um, for um, many purposes, uh, when company develops, um, want to develop new concepts, game platforms, or um, game development tools, when it's developing new operations, or new business models, uh, media concepts, or trying to um, find new markets, also international markets than uh, not only gaming companies, but also uh, gamification solution, which means that companies that provide such solutions for other industries like healthcare and uh, education, whatever you can imagine, they can also apply for uh, our financing. And um, we are not investors. It's very important to understand what we provide. We provide grants, we provide <coughs> loans, and uh, we do not claim any ownership. Um, so, but what we demand, we demand up-to-date business plans, we demand uh, certain expertise, experience, uh, sufficient own funding, and of course reporting on, these, um, on the usage of the money that we provide. And we have uh, several programs uh, starting from uh, very small packages that uh, companies usually apply for at the very early stages. And um, then at the uh, later stages of uh, the development, uh, this uh, funding can be, uh, say, in volumes, um, quite big, I would say. Uh, I have detailed information on all this uh, products, projects, opportunities, and uh, actually anyone interested uh, can um, continue this discussion with me. I'll tell in detail what do we have and uh, what are, um, how, how a company can apply for these, uh, for these funds. 
But uh, so it's uh, required to be a Finnish company. But uh, what about the owners? Uh, no, uh, actually, there is no difference. Uh, not only for uh, when we speak about gaming industry, but in fact, uh, whatever business, whatever industry we take. Uh, a company registered in Finland is considered to be a Finnish company uh, despite the ownership. So um, it means that all companies of uh, foreign origin and of a Finnish uh, origin are treated equally and can uh, get equal support. From um, from us, so but of course uh, registration in Finland, uh, registered Finnish uh, company is a must to uh, start to send an application. Clear, and actually uh, now I want to ask Artem. So you've been keeping silent, but Artem is um, <laughs> actually the guy who moved the studio to to Helsinki and. Um, successfully so this has been already a couple of years and um, I would actually like to ask Artem how easy it was to to move and run the company in Helsinki well apparently Finnish guys are um, are known to be very humble and uh, that's why Artem is particularly very Finnish right now so <laughs> yeah surprisingly it was it was really easy to move company to Finland actually we just sent mail to Vladimir and uh, and then we just came to Finland and uh, and with help Alec also was there so and we just uh, I think it, it took only two weeks to to make uh, to, f to make a Finnish company and then uh, it took a lot of time to to wait for a, a residence permit actually to to have a so it was easy to, to establish company, but it took a lot of time to wait for residence permit. But now I think there's lots of changes because it was two years ago, there were it, uh, lots of changes and right now it should be really fast. So, and uh, what I can say about operating company in Finland, it's, it's also really easy. There's, we have no paperwork at all, everything in digital form. Um, we can work with any companies all over the world, so it's 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 nice and easy. So um, yeah, company I understood, but the, what about the personal life? So you have a family, and uh, how how is the personal life? Yeah, my my family moved with me, but it also took a bit of time to get their residence permit. But now everything is fine. My kids. Uh, goes to finish school and and there is no problem at all in, in finish school nobody in in school nobody even think to blame kid if uh, she doesn't speak finnish so they just okay she will speak okay she, she can speak now but she will and uh, i think yeah in it uh, one year later i think now my daughter my daughter will speak much better and finish than me. <laughs> Was it difficult to, to move the kids? Um, no, it's not a problem to, to move. Uh, you just need to, to rent apartment. That, that's the only problem you have when you're moving with your family. You just need to, to earn some money to live in Finland. And so the, actually, it's, it's quite easy. So if, you are, if your business is working, if you have money to live, no problem at all. You can speak in any place in English, in some health stations or some authorities organization everywhere. You can speak in English, even if they have a forms in Finnish, they will come and help you in English and you will, you will be able to fill it in English. So it's also it's quite easy. Actually, my experience in Helsinki is that whenever I try to speak English, they switch into Russian. Say, you're Russian, you do not speak English. It's like, we know. Which is, every time comes a surprise to me. But yeah, it's, or, or they speak Finnish to me, also true. Yeah, you're lucky because I think not much people in Helsinki can speak Russian. Most of them, they speak Finnish. Even some, you know, some workers in shop, they speak, speak English better than me. 
<laughs> much better. And I know also that uh, ESPO now has the English as the official language. Yeah, but I'm, f I'm living in Helsinki, so. <laughs> but actually, I think uh, everywhere in, in Helsinki, it's, you can use English like official language, so nobody will ask you to, to speak Finnish, or almost, almost nobody. Vladimir. Just a quick question, Tartan. So, are you happy now? <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm quite happy. I like to live in Helsinki. Actually, it's it's really good. It's really green, fresh air, much fresher than in St. Petersburg. And I really like uh, uh, I like living in the forest, like a uh, ride on my bicycle everywhere, and not uh, not afraid of cars. Yeah, Artem lives like 20 minutes away from the city center, so it's already a forest. Let's. <laughs> Obviously. Let's ask one more person who did that and who's here. Question: Are you happy in Finland? <clears throat> Actually, I am not living in Finland now. Okay. I spent some time there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very nice. Um, before we met with Alec, uh, I spent. <laughs> yeah, it was nice before. <laughs> so before, sorry. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we met with Alec, I, I spent some months uh, in Finland with my kid when he was born. Uh, we spent um, about three months in a row. And uh, after this experience, uh, I had a thought that uh, I would like to to move to Finland. But uh, just now, just now, I have a delay because of my business plans. So I can't, I can't tell you anything about living in Helsinki or in Finland right now. Thanks. Maybe Artem, just the last things that from your, per what do you like the most, and maybe what you don't like the most, because it's interesting. It's anyway a different culture, but mm. actually, I. Yeah. If, let me think, I'm not sure if, if there is anything that I, I don't like it. Mm. There, there, there is no such things actually. Maybe, maybe some prices for something. Sometimes, some, sometimes something is quite expensive in, in Helsinki. For example, renting apartment will be really expensive. Some nice apartment will cost you more than 1,000 euros, maybe 1,300, 1, something like this. But if you, if you have money to live, it's not a problem. I think it's for renting. But what I like, I, I think I, I like everything. I like uh, game dev community, I like events, I like, I like people, I like uh, you know, nature, environment, I mean, fresh air, food, everything. So there is, there is I think, everything I like. Yeah, we actually go to the office with uh, Artem sometimes by bicycles. Yeah. I go by bicycle every day. So Oleg, like, uh, we're discussing, like, I'd like to ask one more question. So as we're discussing living in Finland, and apparently Artem is uh, comparing it to living in Russia, right? And, uh, well, if you move to Finland, you will have to deal with uh, the locals, right? Uh, with the game dev community and stuff. So uh, we had a conversation with Oleg. So we uh, partner for the third time in a row. Uh, third year in a row, actually, and um, when we were discussing something, Oleg uh, told me, Julia, you work with me as if I'm Russian. I'm more Finn than Russian. So could you please uh, tell us a little bit about what you meant and what's the difference maybe in uh, the way of thinking of how like Russians uh, think compared to Finns? Yeah, that's just a great example. Yeah, this um, every time we do these events, it's always... Uh, a lot of hassle, so I think everyone knows that, and we have this constant battle with Yulia, because she speaks Russian to me, so she thinks I'm a Russian, but after living so many years abroad, and uh, actually majority of those years abroad in, in Finland, so um, yeah, uh, I think it's, the difference is actually, it's uh, really that um, what I like and what I appreciate is really the plan. Uh, when I got my first job in Finland, um, as a as actually a developer and then later on as a project man manager for the mobile game dev, um, uh, something that I learned like immediately was that uh, to have a plan. So if you fail uh, to have, 
If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's what my first boss taught me, and um, it really works in Finland. So people follow the plans, people follow the deadlines, but when you work with the Russians, they want to have everything done on the very last minute, so I think that causes this tension sometimes, but eventually everything works fine, so I really appreciate it. And actually, I want to throw that ball to, to Vladimir, because I have this in my plans. Vladimir, I know that you have been helping a lot of startups from, from Russia to actually use Finland as a stepping stones. JetDocs is only one example where you help the companies, but you have done this over some years now. So actually my question is, what are you, how do you see the difference between the Finnish and the Russian like entrepreneurs? So most of the time I'm actually working with the Russian startup companies, so I don't do so much work with the Finnish guys these days. And uh, I can just give you a couple of advices before you're planning on going abroad. So um, first of all is actually be prepared. So exactly what Alec was, Alec was saying, that you should have a plan, a clear plan, what you're planning to do. If you just want to you know, move to Finland and start the business there, it is probably not going to work. So if you have a working business model here, uh, try to see how, it's, how is it going to work in Finland or is it going to work in Finland. And if it's not, you have to make some adju adjustments. Um, second of all, you should probably have the sort of resources to move abroad. So I guess, uh, Artem, you had some backup cash with you when you were planning on moving to Finland, right? Yes, my company cash, actually. Yeah, company cash. So have the resources. And um, third of all, um, you should actually clearly know for yourself why are you doing this. So you should have a clear goal ahead of you why you're moving to Finland and where you want to go from there or if you want to stay there. So this is sort of the three key points that I would like to point out. And um, I want to ask Olga, because uh, we touched something very important for Artem when he established the company two years ago, so this has taken some time, but I know that uh, Finland uh, offered uh, the startup visa, and actually I would like you to tell uh, a little bit more about that. What is it and who is it for? And I know that actually the first startup visa was actually acquired by the Russian entrepreneur. Yeah. So great job. Yeah, right. Yes, um, but Sorry, uh, it's right, um, but um, for uh, several years we had such a pro uh, such a kind of a pro not a problem, but I would say a challenge that um, a traditional way to move one's business to Finland was to establish a company first and then acquire residence permits for its uh, owners and directors. And uh, it was not very difficult, but it took time and it brought some uh, unnecessary tension to the process. Now things uh, have changed and since uh, the first of April, uh, we have got a new legislation and uh, we have got a new type of um, residence permit, which we call a startup residence permit. What does it mean in practice? In practice, it means that a foreign company, uh, any company, also a Russian company, can make an application for um, um, a temporary residence permit. Uh, if uh, this company plans to start uh, a new company, a start-up company in Finland. So uh, it is necessary to provide a kind of a business plan uh, to uh, the organization I work for, to Business Finland. We have uh, special instructions at our website and this application can be fulfilled in electronic form. And if an application uh, gets, um, we call it uh, not an application, but, uh, sorry, I always forget this uh, name, a kind of um, evaluation. So we evaluate uh, business plans, and uh, if our experts uh, see them um, say realistic, and uh, they make a positive decision, a company can apply to uh, the Finnish uh, immigration service for this, for this startup permit. 
And then the owners, they can come to Finland and start establishing uh, a company. Uh, and then if everything happens according to plan, this uh, residence permit can be prolonged and after a certain period of time, after four years, after four uh, per, um, temporary residence permit, uh, um, a company owner uh, can apply for uh, a permanent residence permit. So uh, we have certain criteria for evaluating projects, for evaluating business plans. Uh, and so those of you who are interested in uh, these things, um, I can tell you more about uh, that uh, either today during the break or in the evening or uh, tomorrow when I come to our boost at White Nights. So just do not hesitate to ask me additional questions if you are interested. Um, <clears throat> maybe I want to take the ball back to Vladimir and actually uh, ask you what are maybe just a few success cases of the Russian entrepreneurs that you've been dealing with <coughs> lately that succeeded in Finland? Well, lately we actually, in our pipeline, we didn't have too many gaming studios or, you know, sort of individual developers that relocated to Finland. Uh, one interesting case that we were working on was the, um, related to smart mobility and smart city. I'm not sure if we want to talk about this, the Samokat sharing. So, probably skip that. But you help them with piloting the solution in... Uh, yeah, this is, this is actually also what we do. We uh, help you guys uh, pilot your solution uh, in the cities of uh, Helsinki metropolitan area. So, uh, Helsinki, Aspavant and Kaunia and then also in our uh, partner cities like Kotka and uh, Lahti. So, it's uh, sort of up to you guys uh, where, where you want to go. Um, then I would like to touch um, one important point is uh, really the game talents and unfortunately Juha couldn't join us who is the Metropolia uh, University like game designer. Uh, he actually got seriously sick so he, he asked to the apology for not joining because I would actually like to um, find out uh, are there talents available in Finland for the foreign companies that are looking uh, to become international and uh, <coughs> how is the maybe business Finland and all and associations are supporting that as well as the games factory do I start yeah yes, well please. actually there is quite a strong uh, game education in Finland we have different uh, facilities or schools giving game education we actually made a study about the topic and if you go to our website you will find a list of Finnish schools providing game education. So there is, there is growing numbers of, of young people uh, who have formal background or formal education educations for the, for the game development. Of course those people they are not ready when they get out of school usually they have to train a little bit in, in, in the companies, but they have the basic skills, and in that in that sense, this kind of junior league is existing. Uh, at the moment, um, if Finnish game developer companies are looking for senior developers, they have to bring that that labor force from abroad, uh, and that's the reason why we have been working with, uh, with different kind of of. Uh, uh, residence visas and, 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 and uh, working visas with the Finnish government and we have tried to uh, make it more streamlined like, like uh, as it has been before and now we have an aim that, that when every, all, the, all these uh, changes have taken place getting for instance a residence or a working permit for an employee coming outside EU or ETA area should, shouldn't take more than a month so, so it's quite, quite a quite a uh, fast process uh, even even in international terms and of course we have a very strong uh, uh, scene of, of people who are developing games as a hobby so I already mentioned the Finnish game jam every year around thousand people 
uh, Finnish people or also people from some people from abroad, they add to the, uh, attend to different game jam events. So we have been trying to make sure that this is uh, this ecosystem is functional in a way that it's developing all the time. We are developing new talents, uh, uh, talented people uh, to the needs of uh, to the needs of the games industry. And, and definitely um, the Finnish game industry has a need for senior talent, uh, but on, on the other hand, of course, the talent exists in Finland already and, and the game companies on top of the business can, of course, produce a lot of senior talent. That's, that's a good thing. So it's a matter of the companies. They need to uh, compete for the best talent. And, but, but here at uh, Games Factory, uh, we have a team called Games Factory Talents, who actually brings, which actually brings talent from Russian area to Finland and, and ensures that, that the best possible talent finds the best possible co companies in Finland as well. And, and, and you can talk to Oleg. He can, he can point you further in that as well. How many foreigners are there in the game industry? I think a lot <laughs> already. Yeah. Around 20% of the employees are foreigners in, in the Finnish games industry. And around 5% of all the people working in the Finnish games industry are outside the EU and ETA area. It's, it's a little bit different or it's very different to come outside EU ETA area than come inside EU ETA area. And the, uh, the, the, the number has been, or the version has been growing quite steadily. And I guess that in five, for three to five years, it's going to be something like 25, 25 even 30 percent of the of the employees. Yeah, while I was working at Robi, I had uh, 27 different nationalities as as colleagues, so that's quite a lot. All together, actually, we made a little math. All together, we have yeah, employees working more than 105 th different countries wow. in Finnish games industry. So there is people from Australia, there is people from New Zealand, there is some even some people from from Africa. Uh, from I think that the, the blank spots are mostly in Antarctica. Uh, there is no game development in, in Antarctica. Do you have a rule that if there are two then more people in the room that they should speak English. If they don't speak Finnish, they should be speak English. Let's put it this way. If they both speak Finnish, they are take again speak they will Finnish. They speak Finnish, okay. <laughs> and go to the sauna. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but I believe that most of the companies uh, do use English as their, or I would say maybe all of them. All, all the documentation is in English, yes. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And usually, usually when there is, it's a Finnish kind of thing, which is very different than, for instance, in Sweden. Then, if there is one person in a room who doesn't speak Finnish, although there is 50 persons, everybody is speaking English. If you go to Sweden, if there is one person in the room who doesn't speak Swedish, everybody else does yeah. speak Swedish. I mean, <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Okay, I would actually like to once again go back to Vladimir and Olga and just say that these guys are based here in Finland at the Suomitalo, which is a house of Finland. Russia, you mean? So, based yeah, based here in yeah. Russia in St. Petersburg. Um, so it's actually, if you guys are interested and want to talk more, uh, we're going to have a longer break to talk about these opportunities. What? Uh, what the organizations represent here, uh, but now I would actually like to ask the questions from the audience. You want to ask questions <laughs> to the audience, or no, you want, I want the audience to, to ask I want questions? The audience, yeah. Like we we got worried a little bit for for a second there. So does anyone want to ask something? Please ask. This is very Finnish audience. This happens in Finland every time. <laughs> Russian and Finns are the same in this, you know, yeah, in, in yeah, this way. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I would like to ask from Artum uh, about your family uh, and about your spouse. Um, and uh, did your did that occur to you to? Um, that uh, your spouse had difficulties to find job in Finland, or was that uh, how was that? Uh, uh, she she has a uh, Finnish courses actually she finished cl Finnish classes now I think f for a year 
So uh, when you when you come to Finland uh, and you with your spouse and you have no no job, you can go to unemployment office, and they will help you to learn Finnish, and then you will have a uh, lots of employment uh, in, uh, in internship. So so she is pretty happy now. She I think she's quite good in Finnish now. She she is visiting these Finnish classes for almost a year and uh, and uh, another good thing when you are visiting when you are visiting these Finnish classes uh, you have some how it costs they, they pay you for for visiting around 1000 euro just for per month just for visiting classes but you you must learn Finnish actually you must learn you will have exam and you if you don't don't pass exam they will Take money back. Yeah, yeah, they will kick you out and and no money <laughs> after that. So, but but it's uh, it's uh, it's really it works uh, if you if you want to learn and if you want to find a job, they will help you a lot with this. So it's it's not a problem also. Okay. And I actually just want to also say that um, also how easy it is uh, for uh, the companies to work with the universities also and uh, those that uh, and how well it works proves that actually I'm I've been an entrepreneur myself in Finland for four years even more so and um, it's actually both the university and that unemployment office if you're looking uh, to get somebody to work for you and you are not entirely sure that you are want to hire the person so it's actually they're helping you a lot and it's very easy like universities and companies both the unemployment office so I had my own experience that um, I hired a girl to work for me for a year who has been unemployed and imagine they were covering like uh, I think 80% of her salary for the first six months mm -hmm. actually because she was just on the maternity leave and they really wanted her to get back to business so I can say that that and she's a foreigner so like it was extremely good and it worked like perfectly well and um, actually my current um, uh, partner and employee Kim is is there he has actually been studying at the university uh, and uh, he decided to, to to jump into this opportunity so he actually did the internship with the company um, and it worked like extremely well and one actually actually I want to tell you this one I think thing that uh, differentiates this Russian and Finnish educational system is that um, I personally got two degrees from Finland uh, higher degrees because it's free you just need to actually do the exams and 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 and, and, and find time for this but um, I will tell you this interesting story when I first got my first job in a Finnish company which was about 20 people the, this word startup didn't exist then but we joined and we developed a great product for Nokia mobile application so um, I was the employee number 21 that joined them I think I was 22 or 23 just from the university and uh, when I was there for the first week the CEO came to me and asked do you have like a uh, uh, master degree and I said that yeah I do much like uh, I studied two years here in Finland heavily to do this master degree he said that um, you are the first one in the company who has the master degree I was very surprised but later on actually I understood the how great that was that I came to Finland to study so uh, and you know with this very Russian mentality so you come and you just must because your family wants you to get that diploma and you study like crazy to to get all the courses and everything passed on this diploma but then later on uh, I realized that it was not something that I really wanted there was no passion after a couple of years working in development I realized that well I went to this university because and I thought that I'm good in mathematics but after a couple of years it just wasn't my thing so later on when I was already older and I was already working for a different company so I realized that uh, I want to change so I went to the university when I was then 
I think, 27 years old or something like that. And imagine what I realized. I was there in the university, and the people that I was studying there, they were older than me that went, just went to the university. And that shocked me in the beginning. But then I realized that actually this is absolutely great that you don't have, there's no must to go to the university when you just graduate from high school. Yeah, and imagine now, think about yourself. If you would graduate from the high school and you don't go to the university at the age of 18, you're like a loser or something like for life. And your family thinks that you are just, just a loser. So you must go to the university. It's actually quite different in Finland. In Finland, people, when they graduate, they first go to work. And they work a few years or even 10 years before they actually realize that what is it that they want to do in their life what is their passion for, and then they just go to the university to study. And I think that makes a big difference in terms of how you study. When I did my second degree, it took me seven years, but I can tell you the quality because I was already, I knew what I wanted to do, so I went to business school. So that was the time when I studied not that hard, and I started more like with my heart, and it just proves like like equality. And when I graduated with a second degree, there was no question like, you come to any company, you're a passionate, you're older, you're wiser. I think that actually makes like, like a big difference because what I see is, um, like for instance, I take my partner Kim who works with me. He went to the university after like 10 years in banking and like getting the degree that he realized like later on what he wants to do. I think that's just, also shows a little bit of a, of a difference. What Alex says that uh, you shouldn't worry, even if you're old, you, are, you will still be welcome in Finland. It's okay. That's what you meant, right? At the university, <laughs> I mean that if you really, like if you haven't found your passion, trust me, you can come to the university in Finland and you are going to be the, younger, the youngest one there. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to hear more stories from Alec or from any speakers, please come up to them and talk to them because we're going to have the whole hour for coffee break and networking, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.